why aren't Anna and Simeon part of a regular nativity scene? The wise men never show up at the, at the manger, and they come several years later when Jesus is a toddler, probably tearing around like crazy. I guess that's what today's reading is about, this idea of other parts of the story that we remember and cherish. I want to start with a, a small piece of the text today that's a very important piece of Christian tradition. It's called the Nunc Dimittis. Now, Lord, now, Master, you are allowing your servant to depart in peace. In many Christian communities for many years, this is a song that is sung after communion. As Simeon experiences the presence of the Lord in a baby, we would sing it after we experience the presence of the Lord in Holy Communion. It's likely, even in this text, that this was a well-known hymn already in Christian communities, even late in the first century. So when we hear these words, we're going way back, understanding sisters and brothers who would have shared them as well, the recognition that the Christ child has come among us. Now, when we look at the text for today, we have Simeon and we have Anna. These two figures who must have been fixtures at the temple. If you lived in Jerusalem and had gone up to the temple for various things throughout a year, they probably would have been people that you would have been familiar with by sight. Oh yeah, there's old Simeon. Oh yeah, there's old Anna. The sense that they are always there waiting to experience and to come to know the Messiah of the Lord, the one who would redeem Israel in the fullness of of time, as we hear from our other reading. There is this powerful sense that this story is about Simeon and Anna. To a certain extent, it's about Mary and Joseph, and it is about their child. We have a devout Jewish family who is bringing their son to the temple to do the traditional things for their son and for themselves at this point. Luke kind of mashes up the Jewish traditions there, but we get this strong sense that they are faithful and they are bringing Jesus to the temple. But this story is a little less about Mary and Joseph and it's a little less about Simeon and Anna and even to a certain extent, it's a little less about the baby Jesus. This is a story about God. God is the actor in this story. God has determined the fullness of time. God, at that fullness of time, sent the Son among us as one of us. And as we will see as the story unfolds, God places the Holy Spirit in our hearts that we might be inspired to cry out, Abba, Father, that we might understand who God is and how our lives will be changed forever. Now, Simeon shares this song, and it's always interesting to me that Mary and Joseph are surprised by what they're hearing. You can imagine all of the information that they're needing to absorb as they're hearing about their baby child who is new to them, all of the things that are new, right, to first-time parents. There's diapers, there's feedings, there's all kinds of things you have to learn. And then, oh, it's the Messiah. Did we tell you? Yes. That popular song, Mary, Did You Know? Yes, she did, actually. Gabriel was there and told her. But what does it mean to live it, right? To live it. I would imagine that they rolled into the temple assuming that they would be relatively anonymous. And yet, these two fixtures of the temple find them. Simeon, who has been inspired by the Holy Spirit to know that he will see the Lord's Messiah before he dies, latches on to this baby. My eyes have seen, my eyes have seen your salvation. Now, we might read that phrase, seen your salvation, the sense of this grand plan but no, my eyes have seen your salvation. My eyes have seen this baby. That your salvation is not a plan that will be enacted by this child. The plan is 
the child. The plan is the child. I remember when our kids were very small, if I was frustrated with something, if I was anxious and focused on something else, suddenly having a child in my arms caused me to be completely and universally redirected. A child is magical in that way. And the Christ child certainly would have been as well. Now, as we hear more of the Nunc Dimittis, Simeon's famous song and speech, we read into it a little further that the low are going to be brought high and that the high are going to be brought low. For some, this is going to be bad news. And for others, this is their salvation. He is a sign that will be opposed by many, it says. There is a sense of division that is coming with Christ's arrival. A sense that there will be a split. A sense that the status quo, which is comfort, peace, security, and affluence for a few, and despair, poverty, hunger, and violence for the many, is going to be upset. Now, I'm not suggesting that our times are not like this. They're exactly, exactly like this. And Christ comes into our midst today, born to us today in a way that recognizes that our world is still in need of being turned upside down. It will not be the simplest of things. It will be hard. But this idea that Jesus comes among us on a path towards Jerusalem that will ultimately end up at a cross outside of town is not some ambiguous story. It's not a story that we read and then go, huh, I wonder what that means. But rather it is a story that grabs our hearts that causes us to recognize what God has done in this baby. A recognition that salvation has come. Now what's interesting to me in this story that we have today is that part of God's activity in Christ is gathering people into the salvation story. Mary and Joseph, we hear about shepherds and angels and others. Today, we hear about Simeon and Anna, who are brought into this story of God's actions towards salvation in our world and in our lives. Anna is captured in a way where the Spirit works in her heart such that she glorifies God and tells everyone about the redemption of Israel, the salvation of God through Christ. She becomes an evangelist. We had the shepherds, and now we have Anna. Now this image, though, of God drawing people into this salvation story is not something that happened only in the first chapters of Luke or Matthew. God drawing human beings into the story of the Christ child and the salvation that he brings is our story as well. God determined the fullness of time. God inserted the Christ into our history. And God continues to put the Holy Spirit in our hearts that we might be inspired that we might be inspired to share the good news of God's salvation around us. Now we might hear that and think of it as a preaching sort of thing, an email sort of thing, a communication sort of thing, but I feel profoundly in the Gospels that the image that we have is that it's a doing sort of thing. It is in the way in which we live our lives that the Holy Spirit jumps from us to others in a way that inspires and brings God's salvation and good news through the Christ child to all the world. 
So as you hear the readings, and as you move through these 12 days of Christmas, try and reflect on how God is calling you to be a part of this salvation story. And listen to your own heart about how the Holy Spirit is calling you to be a part of that work today. Amen.